Hi guys. Hi guys and welcome back to Sisters in a City with me, Anna Bikili. And me, Mandy Bikili. <laughs> it feels really weird because we're doing this really close to the other one that we've done. Yeah, because this episode was meant to be the other one, but then the other one we got too carried away and didn't do this one. So and we ended up doing two catch-up episodes. Whereas, yeah, we were meant to do a dilemma last week. <laughs> exactly. But um, we're doing dilemmas now. You guys have got so many dilemmas that we need to get through. Like, yeah. we can't leave you guys stranded without our amazing advice. Listen, I really want to do sex dilemmas in it, but because it's Ramadan, we're not doing that. But I can't wait till we do that. I know, me too. We haven't done it for ages. They make me laugh. Yeah, me too. But friendship dilemmas, like, we've all had them. We've all been through it. When we had a podcast, one of our first ones was called The, the Snakes, The Greats and The Fakes. Yeah. Oh and then God. afterwards, we got loads of people message us like, why are you talking about me? I mean, we're not mentioning names. Oh my God, you know, we did mention we recorded a podcast and then it completely, like, we were crying because it, like, we recorded it and it didn't work. The audio was messed up and we lost that episode and it was really good. I feel like, in a way, it's a good thing that episode got lost, yeah? Because the way we were, like, <laughs> shitting on people, yeah? I don't think we were. No, 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 we were. Anyway, it's actually really good that we're doing a friendship one now because I feel like it's very relevant to our lives at the moment. Why? Because... We have no friends. <laughs> we got too many friends. On Saturday, we went for dinner with the girls. So this is a situation, guys, right? We are a group of like six of us, I think. Six yeah. of us. Which have been friends for like 10 years. And some of us have been friends for like 16 years. Yeah, yeah literally. Some of us have been friends for like over 16 years, 20 years, 10 years. And then recently in the last two years, we met another girl which has become friends with some of the girls in our group of six, but not all of them. Yeah. Anyway, on Saturday, we wanted to have a catch up with our girls, the main six that we've been friends with for so many years. And the one that's newly friends with us got really pissed off. Yeah, there was loads of subliminals going on stories. Yeah, loads. And then she messaged me like, who's got a problem with me? Like someone has got a problem with me. And I just thought, you know what? That's just really not fair. I don't know if anyone else gets this a lot with their friends where like one of them feels like they're going to get left out. It's like a school thing. I feel like I understand why she felt like that. But it's because every, it's, we've made a kind of mistake and error and maybe ourselves or everyone else of like every time inviting like the other friend when the close-knit people might want to talk about private things... But we, this is the thing. We wanted to actually talk about private things. So do you know what I think it is? It's like, I don't know. Because when some of the girls in our group, they have other friends as well. And when they go with their other friends, like we don't say anything. Like they're going with the other friends. Like they probably want to talk about certain things with that friend. And like, even though we're friends with that friend, we're not that close with that other friend. So like these things happen in friendships. I feel like we need to approach these things in a more mature way. And also this friend, I haven't spoken to her. She hasn't messaged me. She hasn't called me. I haven't spoken to her in... It's like six to seven weeks. So how close the thing can is, we be? Really, Last time we spoke yeah. was when I called her on my birthday saying, are you coming? The thing is, me and her are really good friends and really close, but she's not close to the other girls. Mm. So like, it's not, my, it's not my decision. If it was my decision, she'd come. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't think she should get angry at me, but like, I literally couldn't be bothered. I don't want any negative energy like anymore in my life. I've got too much shit going on already to have friends that are bringing negative, bad energy to me. Yeah. It's, you know, I, right now I need that like, it to be peaceful. It's just such an awkward one, isn't it? But yeah, I know. I'm, I feel like a lot of people probably go through this. Yeah. Like, why have they not been invited or why is their friend not been invited? It's like, I don't know. I think you need to... Be, I feel like in friendships, you know, maybe you need to have a bit more thicker skin. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. And you need to have different groups. And be more understanding. Go bitch about this group of friends with that group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like, you need other people to vent to. Yeah, true. Anyway, she said, oh, I feel negative energy, so I'm going to distance myself from this. And I was like, okay. I didn't say anything. I just thought, okay, if you want to distance yourself from me, then fine. I mean, I didn't organize that dinner. I wasn't, like, involved. I was just, do you know what I mean? But, like, I haven't spoken to you for so long. And, like, I had to call you on my birthday to be like, are you even coming to it? So, like, seven weeks... Not one message, not one call with someone. Like, I don't feel obligated to invite them. Anyway, anyway. we've got loads of dilemmas that we really want to get through. Um, so I'm going to go straight to it, guys, yeah? Let's do it. Okay, the first dilemma is... Let's see if they a snake, a great or a fake. <laughs> we've got broke up with my ex and my friend is still in contact with him for work purposes. I feel like we broke up on bad terms and it upsets me that she still works with him. Hmm... He's working on her pussy. 
<laughs> what kind of work purposes? What work purposes? I get that. I'm literally, you're so weird. Every dilemma has been part of my life. Like I have a friend that's a criminal lawyer and I had an ex-boyfriend that was a criminal. And when he came out of jail, I introduced him. I don't know why you do this. I don't do this. Like I have my I don't whole... Introduce, I didn't introduce, I wasn't with the guy at that point. He was an ex and I was bored and I was just seeing him for fun. And like they, my girls were at my house and he mm. came round. Yeah, I don't simply, I just don't introduce people. I swear I have had enough experiences and I always tell you this as well. Mm. I'm not bringing A to C and I'm going to be the B. I'm not what doing do you mean? that. If you're with your friends no. and then you want to have a fun, like and int- introduce, um, invite your ting round. Yeah, I don't do that. Oh my God, you guys should use each other exchange numbers. Oh my God, no, fuck both of you. Find your what own What do you client. mean that's your friend though? Yes, so? Don't you want to be a good friend? Help your friend? No. You that's don't want my to help- ex-boyfriend. Like, yeah. find your own clients, mate. Anyway, I was happy with that. But that's her. your mistake. So look, this is the thing. With that guy, it was actually okay for me, for them to do work, work together and for, you know, her to make money. Like, at the end of the day, she's my friend. I wanted to make money. And me and him didn't break up on bad terms. In this dilemma, her and the guy broke up on bad terms. But you also had a situation like that. I had another situation with the same per- girl because she's a lawyer and I had another guy that had a lot of criminal mates. He wasn't a criminal. And he was bringing her loads of clients because, you know, for her to make money. On that situation, I I broke up with him on bad terms. So it upset me quite a lot that she was still in contact with him. But at the same time, when I look back on the situation, I'm like, she was making money. Try and put yourself in the position, Mandy, when you're, if you're working and you're making money. I don't think she's in the wrong at all. Mm. I think you're in the wrong. Because you never know when these things are going to come back and bite you on the ass and when you're going to feel uncomfortable about it. So to prevent that... That's like right now, the situation I've got with my boyfriend now, not letting him work with my, my mate. At the point when you introduce them, you don't think that you're you going to break up. You, you have to think like that though. I always think negatively. I'm a negative person. You don't get into a relationship to think about breaking you, up. You don't think like... You never know though of relationships. Like you should know more than anyone. You've had about a million. So right now, let's say your boyfriend wants to work with your mate. You're not cool with it. Depends which mate. There's only like three people. Okay, those three people. Yeah, let's those say, three people. Okay, and then let's say your boyfriend and you break up, God forbid. Yeah. And that mate of yours is making loads of money working with him. Like how much money is so much money? Can't, you you see get, what I mean? No, first of all, those like three people that I'd allow to work with my gingerbread right now. Right. Yeah. Those people will come to me and be like, What's, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we cutting him off? So at the end of the day, I don't care if you're making millions. Like, Really? The thing is, the the only reason I can like bite my own tongue on this is because if if I am confident to say to that person, you can work with Gingerbeard, I should take the L that if I break up with him, like she's gonna be working with him, making money, and I'm gonna be basically in a fucked up, awkward situation. So to be smart, I should avoid that in the first place because she shouldn't really have to create a business partner and then cut them off or create an employee or have a good working relationship and then end it because of me. I shouldn't have made that mistake in the first place. So you wouldn't let them work together. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mistake. Make your mind up right now because you're like going back. It's getting a bit confusing, the right, guys. The right thing to do is to like, you know, the right thing to do is probably say like, no. You don't want them to work together? No. Really, you have to put yourself in the position of the friend that's making money. It's your livelihood. Unless, that's your roof. That's your food on the mm, table. Yeah, ain't no food coming on my table. <laughs> mm. So unless you're giving me a drink, unless I'm getting a cut, you can cut. Like, give me a drink out of that fucking moolah and then we'll talk. Work as long Be as you serious, like. Be serious, Mandy. I'm being so serious. If my mate's working with my ex-boyfriend that I don't good like right now, you better be putting money in my bank account every fucking week. <laughs> I don't agree. I think we must... We're going to agree to disagree on Let's this. Let's agree to disagree then. Yeah. Let's move on. Look, I think at one. the end of the day, yeah, it depends how much money they're making. If they're not making that much money and so it's she not wants like... to start getting accounts out or start doing tax with calculator. <laughs> If you're making over thirty thousand pounds a year, I'll allow you to work with my ex. If it's below this threshold, no. For example, my situation: she's getting clients of him. Yeah, that's that's that. For that reason, I think you should cut him off because you're just getting clients. Well, stop the clients. Go find your clients somewhere else. People aren't just going to decide to cut people off and lose money. You have to have that conversation with someone. They're not mind readers. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? This person, you have to decide. Right, your friend being in contact with your ex. How much? bad energy is that bringing into your life if it's bringing too much bad energy into your life you ask your friend to cut work purposes thing with off yeah if they can't 
cut it off or do they want to distance yourself a little bit for a while until you get over the situation? Because I promise you, at one point you're going to get over the situation and you probably won't care. Or ask her if she's going to make any like monetary gain from the situation <laughs> since she, you know, plugged it up. <laughs> since you plugged it up. <laughs> for God's sake. Anyway, next one we've got is my friend constantly talks about my... Sorry, let me start again. My friend constantly talks about her boyfriend and I'm single. That's all it is. That's I guess that's my annoying. friend constantly talks about her boyfriend and I'm single. It's like imagine being a single person and you're and whenever you're around your friend, all she's doing is, My boyfriend did this, my boyfriend did that, my boyfriend did... and you're just like, for God's sake. We need this girl to meet our boyfriend's friend. Because our boyfriend's friend does the opposite. Yeah. He sits with our boyfriend and says, Oh, it's great being single. Yeah. This is why I'm single. This is why I'm single. This is yeah. why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. <laughs> and it's like, honestly, Shut the fuck up. when Mandy went on uh, a dinner with her boyfriend and him, I was like, There's no way you can go for a whole dinner without him saying at least one thing, like one comment. At yeah. Least. Literally, like, Gingerbread was like, Oh, I can't, Mandy, I can't deal with this stress as a joke. And he was like, This is why I'm single. Yeah. So maybe this fre- this girl that's got this dilemma, when your friend starts talking about her boyfriend, you start talking about being single. Do you know what? It's so great being mm-hmm. single, you know? I don't have anyone to fuck up my day. It's so peaceful. I don't have to ask anyone if, like, what, if I can do something, if I can't. I don't yeah. have to answer to anyone. You start talking about how great it is to be single. Yeah, it's just be like, is that amazing? All these different lads buying me drinks at the bar. <laughs> The way that guy ripped my clothes off. Yeah, that passion. Oh, passion. You're probably having boring missionary mm, sex. Yeah. Once, like a missionary, <laughs> once, well, a once a month. Once a month. Once a month, yeah. <laughs> no, joking. For real though, I think you should just say to your friend, this is not enough of a reason to like cut ties with your friend or anything like that. Yeah, and don't do this thing where you're gassing up like being single because two wrongs don't make right. Yeah, the right thing to do is actually just be like, maybe just to air out your thoughts and opinions. Just be like, um, babe, I'm fucking single. Do you want to keep talking about your boyfriend and depressing me or something? No, like but that? why it's not depressing being single? You should be like, you just sound so obsessed with your boyfriend. He's literally all you talk about. Do you have a life? Do you have one? And you know, everyone's like you, no filter and so confrontational. Maybe talk about like, like for even... example, someone like me, I get very uncomfortable upsetting people. <laughs> I get uncomfortable. You don't get uncomfortable upsetting me. You're the only person, you and my boyfriend are the only people that I don't feel uncomfortable upsetting. Well, it shouldn't really be like that. It should be the other <laughs> way around. Where like, you can like upset other people but not your close Because you people. guys are like me, like you're a part of me. So it's like I'm upsetting myself. Do you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? No, I'll just be here as your punching bag and you step on eggshells around strangers. Then. <laughs> yeah, everyone else. So I'm really, I don't want to upset anybody. So if you're someone like me and you don't want to like upset your mate and be like, don't talk about your I boyfriend. I just love taking, getting the opportunity to upset people. The only problem is like, I feel really guilty after. You know, because I'm like a good person and everything. Like, you know that time, like, that guy really annoyed me and then I was just like, when he came round to Gingerbread's house, I was like, why the fuck are you here? I know, I don't know how you do shit. And I was like, get the fuck out. And then I felt really guilty afterwards. And I was like, you know what? I just don't want to step down to that level. Mm. Like, even if people annoy me and say little digs or whatever, I just don't want to step down to that level. But for some reason, do you know what I mean? I always trip, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Next dilemma. Say it in a nice way. Say it in a nice way. In a really nice way, not the way Mandy said it. This happened to Anna, actually. Anna was going for a breakup and like I brought someone over to cheer her up and all she did was talk about how fantastic this guy she was dating Honestly, was. Honestly, I was imagine that. What, do you remember last year when I was going through that heartbreak and I was crying? I was on the fo- sofa crying my eyes out about the situation and she sat there and she literally was like, yeah, the guy I'm like with is doing this. It's really nice. It's amazing. We went on a dinner last night yeah. and me and Mandy just looked at each other. And I'm like, look what he takes to me. <laughs> Look what he takes me. And me and Mandy looked at each other. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. So strange. Anyway, moving on. I always message first and I always visit her city. She's only ever visited me once. We live 40 minutes away. Mm. Right. But what if her city is like Utah? Your city is like Utah and hers is like L.A.? You know, mm. maybe there's more go... shit popping yeah. in, in her city, or I don't think LA is a city. It's a state. <laughs> it's a state. No, it isn't. It's a city. God, California is a state. LA is a city. Yeah, LA is a city. God, we sound we like complete idiots. Complete idiots. Geography is not our spot. We're giving advice. Yeah, is our <laughs> facts you know. friendship. Why did you take it to geography? Look, basically, yeah. Is there a reason why you're doing all the traveling? Is there something going on in her life right now that's you know? taking up a lot of her time and energy? Is her work really hectic and you're more free? You know, is there reasons for 
this situation. If there's absolutely no reason for the situation, that's yeah. not cool. It's not fair. It's not fair. Maybe she's got dogs. They don't allow you to live. You know what I mean? Like, they literally trap you in the house. So, I think Anna's right. Have that conversation with her. But if it is because loads more stuff's popping in her city or it's because she's got a really demanding work schedule, you just need to compromise and meet in the middle. Why don't you meet in the middle city? Mm, yeah, true. Book a hotel room. Have some fun. But it's her friend. With other people. They don't want to. They want to spend time in their friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Not everything's about having sex. Anna, what? Don't say that word. <gasps> yeah, sorry, we meant keep to... this like PG. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, like just obviously, just be honest. Next time she's like, "When are you coming?" Be like, "When are you coming?" Yeah. <laughs> when are you coming? I always come. <laughs> you know, with a little smiley emoji. <laughs> All right. Next one is my friend has got into an overprotective relationship, and her boyfriend won't let her say hi to me if I'm with any guys. <laughs> what? Hi. <laughs> Well, let her say hi. Like, that's a bit extreme. I can see this girl, like, bumping into her friend in the bar and just be, like, walking straight past her, oh, yeah. ignoring her friend and texting her from the like, can't say hi. Sorry. Sorry. Probably not even in a bar because her guy's so overprotective, she's probably not allowed in the bar. Probably, like, on the street, like, going past Sainsbury's and she's, like, standing on the corner with Mate, a guy. you know, I've had my fair share of overprotective guys, yeah, but, like, not being able to say hi is a bit extreme. Like, what's going to happen? You're going to say hi and the guys are going to explode in their pants. <laughs> What's going to happen? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Oh my God! The way she said hi! Like, what is what is like imagining? Like, So I just think you need to fucking like get your friend out of that relationship. Mm, no, look. Yeah, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because we've all been in like overprotective relationships, obviously, because mm. we're like Middle Eastern. We've dated a lot of Middle Eastern guys. And we like toxic men, as you know. No, because like, obviously, the guys we're with now are the least, yeah. like, they're not like that at all. They're yeah. Greek. So they're very chilled. Yours is not that chilled. Mine's, like, might actually let me go out naked and <laughs> maybe get a part-time job in a strip club. Um, but yours is, like, a bit... I feel like with mine, it's like, right now, like, for example, he won't let me post pictures on Instagram from behind. Yeah. Like, there's a certain degrees that I'm allowed to and certain degrees of the body that I'm not allowed to. Which, you know what? It's not going to change my life. It's not going to, like, have a huge effect on my life. Yeah. To let him do... Like, do you, you know, know, like, you're not posting that... But I'll post it and like you can't. God, the shit you post is so lucky you can post shit like that. Oh, you just wait. Yeah. What? You're like on my fucking. Instagram you like got them sexy lingeries in the, in the mirror, like. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm mm. not allowed. I sound like a fucking idiot. But um, let me be the sexy sister. I enjoy it. Fair. Let me be the sexy sister. I've got a sexy picture from Cannes last year, which I really want to post. Anna, get over that picture. You constantly talk about the pictures from last year. Yes, yeah, you took it of me in the showers. Yeah, it was the, great. In the beach club with my what booty out. Do you think if we like face tune your hair black and your eyes brown, we could put? I could post it pretending it's me. You're gonna get loads of pictures on holiday. Yeah, but that's a really nice picture you have, and it's going to waste. Why not pretend it's me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I just <laughs> no, I'm hoping that I'm going to get away with posting it one day. No. Yeah. You're not going to. it's going to be like, throwback four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Finally posting it. <laughs> but oh, yeah. that made me laugh. Look, I think in a relationship, it's all right, like, to compromise certain things for your boyfriend. Like, as long as it's not affecting your life. It's understandable if a guy, you know, doesn't want you to post certain pictures. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, not being able to say hi is extreme. Yeah, I had some seriously protective exes. Like, one of them wouldn't let me wear, like, anything with, like, cleavage below here, like, below my neck. Um, and, like... That was what was I doing saying yes to that shit, man? I think like, we were young and we were just still learning. Like at the end of the day, we're learning as well. And right. at, you were at an age where you were learning. I had I, know. A, I had one as well that was like, you can't post on Instagram. Do you remember? He was like, you know what I mean? why are you posting on Instagram? Who do you think you are? Some influencer? Like, You're just I a pharmacist. I never agree to that shit now unless like serious money's getting put in my bunk account. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> I will wear turtlenecks till I die. No, I actually wouldn't still. No, imagine all like, the money in the world. You're not going to start wearing turtlenecks. The titties want to be free. What's the point of all the money in the world if you can't put a bit of titty out there? Well, in your case and my case. Yeah, anyway. Not everyone's case. <laughs> <laughs> Some people like to put their titties away. Mm. Um. Anyway, what should this girl do for her situation? Um. Well... What was that? Sorry, what was that? Basically, her, her friend's boyfriend's really oh, right, overprotective. The high guy. And when you say hi, obviously this guy that she, her, your friend is with is toxic, yeah? And we had a situation with Mandy where she was with a very toxic Which boyfriend. One? Your first ever boyfriend, right? Ooh. He was very toxic. 
And I realized the more that I was trying to tell Mandy, like, he's not good for you. Leave him, leave him. She was giving me this Romeo and Juliet complex. Yeah, I was like, if you stay with him, I'm not going to be your sister anymore. And I was like, everyone's against us. Like, we're meant to be. The world is trying to take us apart. And then I realized that, like, when she... Then I basically realized that that tactic's not working. So I started to be like more like, okay, this is the guy you want to be with. That's fine. And I started to be more supportive and be like, okay, I'll be friends with him. This is your life. This is the guy you choose. Good luck with it. I'll be cool with it. And then like, when there was no more battles to fight and no more wars to win, I just saw this guy in the light that he was. And I wouldn't say light, I'd say darkness that he was. And I was like, yo, like... She came to her senses. I need to get the fuck out. But anyway... So I don't know if you should be completely like telling your friend, this guy's bad, leave him. You can't even say hi to me. Da, da, da. Yeah. Kind of, she all realized probably herself. Maybe just she... drop advice first. And yeah. then if that doesn't work, then just be like... Because you might be driving her more into his arms. And I, like this guy, the high guy, I'm going to call him the high guy. <laughs> um, the high guy, like obviously she needs to say bye to the high guy. <laughs> but like, it's going to take some time. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take some time. But... She'll probably get sick of it herself being in a relationship where she can't even say hello to her friends. Yeah. God, come on. That's extreme. Right, we've got here. My friend always copies what I do, what I wear. I love her, but it's really annoying. She might just murder you and take your identity. (laughs) Like the movies. (laughs) This sounds like proper like a school thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Like we had this, we had this like two in friends school. in school that always had this battle. Yeah, she was like, one of them would dye their hair blonde, the other one would dye her hair. I didn't blonde. understand that though. Like, one of them dyed their hair blonde, the other one dyed their hair blonde, and they're just like, oh my god, she's copying me, she dyed her hair blonde. Bruv, you don't own peroxide. Like, <laughs> fuck off. Like, everyone's dying their hair blonde. But imagine having a friend, like, every time you like you wear an outfit, she's wearing it as well. Yeah, that's actually someone needs to call the police for that. That's called cloning. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's obsess- obsession. <laughs> you imagine it, you're hitting the club together, you're walking down the street, you're wearing the exact same thing, exact hairstyle, exact shoes. It's going to be like a bit weird. I'd have to kill that person. <laughs> like, that would so scare me so much. But like, you know what? Maybe say to her like, babe, maybe get your own identity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be like, no, you'd be like, babe, we look so weird walking down to the streets or going into the club in the same outfit. Yeah. We look like losers. One of us needs to change. You look like a loser because <laughs> you're copying me every day. But no one knows that she's the one copying her. And you're fucking scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> no, just be like, one of us needs to change and change. Yeah, change country. <laughs> yeah, one of us needs to change the country that we live in. Yeah. Uh, but if it's just like you buy an outfit and she's like, that's a really nice outfit and she buys it and you wear it at separate times. I mean, it's not that's that deep. That's not that deep. Like I do. Like, oh my God, I love them boots. I'm buying them. Or I love that top. I'm buying them. Like seriously, they're on sale for like a <laughs> number of people. They're not limited edition just for you. Exactly. I don't know whose side to take, man. <laughs> I don't know whose side to take. I mean, obviously, if she's copying everything, like, you need to say something because it's weird. If it's just here and there, then you need to relax. Look, my friend had a beauty spot on her face and beautiful beauty beauty mole or whatever. And I was like, is it okay if I just start drawing that on my face because I really like it? And that's a whole, like, part of her facial identity. And I just took that for oh, years. Yours is completely different to hers. Hers is a bigger beauty spot. Yours is like a dot. Excuse me? You can barely see yours. Well, that's really rude. I try. I really try. <laughs> barely see yours. Can you see it, guys? You can't see it because I've toned it down recently. <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on to the next dilemma. I've got that one friend that becomes overly flirty and different around my boyfriend. That is an absolute no-go. That's not a friend. That is not a friend. That that's is, a hoe. Like, that's for the streets. Yeah. Girl. That's for the streets. No, you've got no time for this This kind of people around you. Mm. She a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, we had some friends. I wouldn't say they were really close to us, but they were close enough for Mandy to, you know, tell them about her relationship. What and... I bloody was like confiding in them cunts. Yeah. Is it confiding or confiding? Confiding, con- whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, um... Basically, her when Mandy and her boyfriend broke up, her ex-boyfriend broke up, obviously, um, we ended up going out and seeing these girls that we were mates with that we used to talk to about these situations in the club, like with my ex as well, 
Her ex, my ex that I bro- was broke up on bad terms with, her ex, like giggling on the sofas in the club. Yeah. And imagine this, the girl didn't even say hello to us. She literally looked through us. She just aired us completely. Imagine like telling someone about your boyfriend while he's your boyfriend. Like, like even I cried once to them about him and like all of this shit introduce them mm. and then when I break up like you're on nights out with him and like there's something going on I heard that one of them has Why something going on with him even coming back to you there's no smoke without fire baby yeah like you go on you basically like sorry I don't want to be rude because I don't want to I don't actually want to like disrespect him because that's men are men in it <laughs> do you know what mm. I mean but like you're a woman like all that dick out there why are you going for my old dick mm. You know what? Mm. I think, basically, you need to be careful about the kind of friends that you have around you and the people you have around you, right? Because if certain people get excited about men too much or, like, you know, them kind of girls that get overly excited about guys... uh, Yeah, and they're not even excited about guys, Anna. Do you know what they're excited about? Money. No. What? They're excited about attention from guys. They love attention. They want to feel the sexiest, the prettiest, the most beautiful. Girls like that, that like need attention or they're attention seeking. Yeah. It's like bad sign, red flag. Yeah, they haven't had enough experience probably and they have this like feeling of like, I need attention to make me feel sexy. I need to be like validated. Mm. And then it's not even the guys that they want. They just want the guys to want them. Yeah. These girls... Imagine these girls come to my house. We're like, we're friends. Like, and then especially one of them, like, we're friends. And then you're going out for shisha with my ex. You're going out, they're coming to your workplace. You're doing all this madness. Like, you ain't my friend no more. They're invited to my 30th birthday. Like... Oh my gosh. It's a audacity. Ma- I, I would never do that. Exactly. You know what's so mad, yeah? That's how I see it. If I wouldn't do that, then... If you do that, then I know right. it's wrong. Even though we weren't tight, we had that kind of loyalty between us. We had that level of, like, closeness where we had loyalties. And, like... If one of them broke up with like their ex, yeah, I would never. I would never ever even like become close in any way. Mm. And for people to start saying there's something going on between them, between my ex and the girl, just shows how like scummy it is. Do you know what I mean? Really, mm. really low class. But do you know what's so mad? So I must have lost my temper and said something like, "I can't believe I was drunk. I was really embarrassed myself. Like lost my shit." Um. I mean, I was a gingerbread at the time. I don't give a fuck about my ex at that point. I just was give a fuck about a friend backstabbing me. Yeah. So I went, kicked off, and then she was sending me loads and loads and loads of screenshots between her and my ex to prove that their conversations are platonic and they're friends. And then I thought, bro, why are you and my ex even talking that much? Like, why are you even friends? So like, strange. that's just equally as strange. Like, why are you guys exchanging so many WhatsApp messages? You know what? Even if I ended up, like, somehow being in a circle of, like, one of their ex-boyfriends, in, in a circle, let's say I was dating a guy. Yeah. And her ex-boyfriend was friends with the guy I was dating. You would right? Never, yeah. I'm keeping that guy at arm's length, though. Yeah, you're not going to be WhatsApping long messages with each other, becoming besties. They had nicknames for each other. Yeah, that's snake. Strange, snaky, fully snaky. And I think you need to be careful, just like how we are with men, and we, like, call it red flags with men, and we pick up signs on toxic, bad men you should be able to pick up signs on toxic, bad friends. Yeah, to be honest, I just keep my circle really small and I don't want any of these, like, friends get yeah, fake friends ever again in my life. Like, don't bring these hoers around me. Anna always tries to bring these kind of hoers, these hoes around me in my life. Like, Mandy, new friend, new friend. Fuck off, keep her out of my life. Because at that point when I'm doing it, I'm not thinking, oh... They would, they would do something Why? wrong. And I'm just thinking, oh, they're fun. Let's go out. Let's have a good time. But then I've started to change now. I'm not, I'm having, not doing it a anymore. girl even laughs differently around Gingerbeard, I'm slapping the laugh out of her face. Yeah, for real. Like this person that says her friend acts differently around her boyfriend, that's a red flag. That's yeah. You need to get rid of this friend. She want to suck his dick. Unless you're overly paranoid. What if she's like... I'm a par- very paranoid person. Like I wouldn't like, for example, I'm like... I'm possessive, paranoid person. Look, Anna, so maybe this girl's being paranoid. If she's like, maybe the girl's just being normal and she's like, you're flirting. Where, how many people just get paranoid for no reason? Though? She's obviously has some kind of like, mm. you know, proof. Like yeah. She must have witnessed her personality change. Change. Yeah. So like, look, if it's someone that you can't trust to go like your boyfriend to drop them home at night, just them two, that's not your friend. Mm-mm. That's just some hoa. <laughs> she got to get. <laughs> yeah, for real. Okay, so moving on. My best friend and I, I'm not even sure if we're friends anymore. She's been slowly distancing herself and we don't speak at all anymore. And I still don't know if I did 
anything wrong. Only thing I can think of is she's super focused on her relationship. It's heartbreaking, but I'm not chasing someone who clearly doesn't want to be friends anymore. That's so sad. That really hurts my soul. Look, there's two different situations, I think. You can even either outgrow your friends, which I think should be normalized. Yeah, 100%. Outgrowing your friends. Maybe you look... Take a step back and look at the situation. Have you outgrown each other? Are you really like on different paths and like don't get on anymore? Mm. Are you not there for you? You're not bringing positive energy into each other's lives anymore. Do you know what I mean? You're not doing anything good for each other, right? Or is she just being really like neglecting you because she's so focused on her relationship and she's actually neglecting your friendship? Because she has a boyfriend, this girl. Yeah, she said, I don't know if she's super focused on her relationship. Well, I think... 100% when you get in a relationship, you have less time and energy for your friends Mm -hmm. because, like, you've got this partner that, like... Is also your friend. It's so time-consuming as well. Do you know what I mean? Being in a relationship is literally hard work. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe that's part of it. But if it's, like, fully, like, ghosting you because she's in a relationship... we don't talk at all anymore. Yeah, well, people like that... It's happened to us. People like that are going to regret it, yeah, because if anything, God forbid, goes wrong in her relationship, she gonna be begging for someone to get her through that heartbreak. Because dicks come and go most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time, dicks come and go. But your friends stay. Chicks before dicks. Chicks before dicks. Fries before guys. Fries? Where did fries come from? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, fries do come before guys as well. Though. <laughs> I do love fries. But um, um, We had a situation, we had a friend that was, I consider, honestly, she was like a bestest friend to me. Like, so close. We used to work together. And we were really close. And then she got into a relationship which she ended up getting, I think, I don't I don't know if she got married or engaged. I don't even know. But all I know is she got pregnant. She didn't even invite me to her baby shower. We stopped talking. At the end of the day, I understand if you're on a different path and you're, you know, you're all about the baby mummy, mama life and, you know. There's loads baby, of people with babies and our, yeah, our friends. Yeah, and they're are, like, right, I understand you don't want to cu- hit the, the club with us every weekend anymore. Like mm. me and Mandy, we're still doing what we were doing before. We're still going out every weekend getting drunk. <laughs> we... <laughs> You're making us sound really bad. Yeah, but it's the truth. We don't go clubbing. We don't go clubbing. We go out every weekend. We party a lot. A lot, okay? So, I understand if you don't want to do that. But at the same time, you can still have a friendship with us because we still meet up with our friends and do dinners, casual dinners. We still meet up at home and have a shisha and, you know, chill. We don't have to go out with each other. We can still be friends. We can, just don't bring your baby. (laughs) She's joking. But you know what I mean? Like um, in that in that situation with her, I don't think we outgrew each other. I think she just neglected us. She she ghosted, yeah. She, she ghosted us. She didn't invite us to her baby shower. I'm actually really hurt mm. by that. So yeah, is it outgrown or is it is it neglection? It's like one person might see it is it as a, a word? is it <laughs> as like we're outgrowing each other. The other person might see it like I'm being neglected. Isn't it so strange that right? The mm. person that's probably like distancing is feeling like oh I'm outgrowing this person. The other person's feeling neglected. Such an objective thing it is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if somebody's not putting in the same energy, like keep trying to like maintain the friendship, but if you really see no reciprocation, then you really have to like, you know, have some dignity. Know your worth as yeah, well. Yeah, and you can have a better friend than that. You don't need a friend like, like she's not doing anything. She's not speaking to you. She's not there for you. What's the point? My mom found her bestest friend ever at the age of like 40 something. Yeah. And that person is like her sister. Literally. They are inseparable. So you can find, you still have time to find your closest people. Exactly, especially all these apps now. Yeah, and how weird is it, Manny? Maybe we're going to meet someone, me and you, which is going to be our best friend and we still haven't met her yet. If we leave that to you, it's going to be a whore. (laughs) (laughs) I I know that for sure. Maybe leave it to me. But (laughs) to be honest, I don't think, we we don't have time for any more friends. I already find it difficult with the friends that we have. Right. And like, of like there's, there's a group of six of us that are the closest and then obviously there's other people that I'm friends with and is who's the other people? I don't, I'm not like, friends with anyone I have other friends and I find it so difficult like I hate WhatsApp and I'm trying to like reply to everybody yeah even down to like everybody and it's very difficult I don't talk to anyone apart from the six girls <laughs> I don't talk to anyone else I've got two dogs and a boyfriend and a very demanding mum <laughs> so like it's a lot you know and a sister She's a lot. I don't ask for anything from you. Really? No. (laughs) I don't. I don't call you. I don't don't, don't bother you. That's the problem. I don't bother you. I'm always calling you. Shut up. Okay, right. Let's move on, okay? Okay, can I be affectionate with my friend? My friend is a straight man and I am a gay man. 
do you know what? It really, really bothers me, right? How people think that just because like you're a gay man, let's say, that you're going to fancy every single penis yeah. that walks past you. Like It doesn't work like that. don't. We're straight, right? Does that mean I fancy every single man? No. no the problem is we don't fancy anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same situation for a gay guy. Yeah. Gay guys are quite fussy, some of them, you know, like, remember the guy that was our manager, that gay guy? Yeah. He's super fussy. He would, he didn't fancy anyone really easily. Yeah. So, your friend needs to get over himself. Tell him to get over himself. Tell him even if he was the gayest man on the planet, you wouldn't fucking, you wouldn't look at him. Yeah, like, I think if you've been affectionate before or like maybe you've just come out as gay, I don't know what the situation, Maybe right? he's just not affectionate though. Maybe you're right. overthinking it. Maybe you're being insecure and paranoid. Yeah, maybe you're affectionate and he's not. Yeah, because like, we're not very affectionate. We're not affectionate of our friends. No one's hugging and kissing. Me and mm. Emma don't even hug and kiss. Yeah. So, I don't know what the situation is. What if they were affectionate before and then he came out as gay and then now his friends stopped being affectionate with him? Yeah, but he would have said that in the dilemma. Guys, your, your dilemmas need to be more clear and specific. More detailed. More detailed, yeah, because we don't know the situation. Yeah, but I think... Definitely have this conversation though and just be like, you know, I see you like a brother. That's mm -hmm. a really good way of, you know... Mm -hmm. That's how I make it very clear to like men that I'm completely unfuckable. Yeah. And like I'm not interested at, at all. At the same time, can I say something? Yeah. Look, I'm... Obviously straight, right? And I have. Are you sure? I know. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know. I've never. I've never tried. Shut up! Hurry up. Anyway, okay. So if I have a mate that's a guy, yeah, I have a guy mate. Let's say, yeah, I could be affectionate with him and hug him and stuff like that, but I can't sleep in the same bed as him, right? Like I can with my girlfriends, right? Do you get what I'm saying? So I can sleep in the same bed as my girlfriends, but I can't sleep in the same bed as my guy mate, right? Yeah. I think that you do, even though you're, I know you're gay and your friend's straight, like your friend's straight, but you're the same sex. I do think that there's going to be a little bit of a line there because obviously of your sexuality. Do you know what I mean? But do you know that like loads of people would sleep in the same bed as their male friend? Yeah, and they do. Oh, yeah, I know. I remember in Love Island, I was discussing this with loads. They do. Yeah, I know. That's weird. Guys wake up with Bona. Like he's looking for a hole. <laughs> I don't know. But what do you think? Fucking weird. I wouldn't be okay. Would you be okay with even sleeping? I'm your sister. Would you be okay with me sleeping next to your boyfriend? I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't. To be honest, I, you're the only person I probably wouldn't mind. The thing is, though, Anna, you wouldn't. You wouldn't mind, yeah, because like I'm your sister. But like, you know, men, yeah, they're just sick. You know, like the <laughs> shit that crosses their mind. Like you can't trust any man, but the whole species, the whole species, Stop. be sick. She's joking. Joking. Mandy, stop it. You're going to sound like a female Andrew Tate. Why? Because you're being really, really sexist towards men. I'm not, but like, even if your sister's sleeping in the same bed as your boyfriend, like, you don't even want some shit to cross their mind because men be nasty. Like, why? Well, I'd hope that his shit wouldn't cross his mind. Obviously, like, intrusive thought. Like, not of actual thought that they want to have. Yeah. Like, an intrusive thought that's like, then they're like, ugh, go away. But like, why? That only happens when you're putting two opposite sex. Like, in the same... Why? Why is it necessary for two, a male and female friend, to well, sleep in the same bed? Point. So my point was, in this situation with him and his, and his friend, they're both men, mm. but he's gay and he's straight. To be honest, maybe I'm being over the top because I actually wouldn't care. To be honest, if you'd send me a ginger bit and I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. But I'm just trying to give it, it's like, you're different, you're my sister. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like my friends doing it. We're I not talking about ginger bit right I'm now. I'm trying to understand yet <laughs> if it's a problem with an, a male and a female, female to sleep in the same bed even if they are friends. platonic and friends. And the only way I can think about that and the, that's why I'm putting this hypothetical situation. Because otherwise, if I was using another man as an example, I'd be biased. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you should, and I don't think you can. I, 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 I had this debate with loads of people in Love Island. I remember we were talking about. We it. grew up in a Middle Eastern household. Do not fuck with us. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I just don't think it's it's right. Bro, I wasn't gonna leave the flat today when my gingerbread was getting a massage. She's so over the top. Yeah, I'm... she's so over the top. I booked a massage for her and her boyfriend tonight today, and I was like, Mandy, while he's getting his massage, get ready and like come see me for the podcast. And she was like. I ain't leaving him alone in the house with this woman. I so, Do you know why, yeah? That's extreme. I feel like when the guy, I got a guy massaging me, like, he gave me a bit of vibes, you know? Yeah, but you won't do anything. 
Obviously, I know gingerbread wouldn't fucking do anything. So I then who cares? No one gonna give vibes if my scary face is there. Was don't you dare give vibes. This woman was the nicest woman ever. Was she? Yes. <laughs> so amazing. She was so nice. I think it's just extremely like at the end of the I day. I said it to him and he is laughing his ass off here because he was like, you go first, and then like I was like, I ain't leaving you. And he's like, I lo- he lo- he's like, I love you. I love how possessive you are. I love it. I'm not like and that at all with my boyfriend. I oh, could walk off and leave him. But Gingerbeard like loves me being possessive so much. So I think I kind of play up on it a little bit as well. <laughs> we just completely went. Digress, yeah. Digress. I don't know we, about this whole thing. About affectionate with his friend. I know. How did it get into sleeping in the same bed? You're the one who digresses. Because we, I was saying how you can be affectionate with your mate because even though you're gay and he's straight. But what I was trying to say is that there's a line about like affection and closeness that there will be there. What, the only line but, is sleeping in the same bed, which not everyone will agree with. Otherwise, there is no other line. I'm not snogging my friends on the lips, <laughs> am I? Or pecking them or stroking their titties. I'm just giving them a hug and a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> This is a hard like, one. I just thought, you know, some guys sleep in the same bed with each, with their guy mates. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he he and him can't sleep in the bed anymore because now there are sexual feelings towards... There aren't sexual feelings, though. No, there aren't sexual feelings, but he's gay. It's like how I can sleep in the same bed as my girl mates, but I won't sleep in the same bed as my guy mates. But if you did sleep in the same bed as your guy mate, what do you think would go through your mind? Nothing. And me too, absolutely nothing. Then it's just like a principal thing. Yeah. I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't know. I put my hands up and I don't fucking know. We don't know. We don't know everything. We don't know everything. We know most things. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just, you could be affectionate. That's all I know. And if that person thinks that you being affectionate means that you you like them, tell them to get over themselves. Right. You like, know what? You're not my type anyway. I've heard a lot of stories about male and female friends sleeping in the same bed and they end up fucking. Mm. Have you? No. I've heard so many. From who? When I used to go to work, like, and shit. Oh my God. Like, they're friends, so platonic, and they kept sleeping in the same bed. Everything was fine. 10th time, fine. 15th time, fine. 20th time, fine. On the 45th time, some penetration started popping off. Yeah, especially if you're drunk. And then they wake up full of regret and it gets awkward after that. But because, you know, they just go back to normal because some people be weird like that. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's how you know. Because sometimes, like, if you put the pussy on a plate, like, they're going to eat it. Mm. Especially when you're drunk. When you're drunk, you're horny. Oh, you're horny you yeah, are. Yeah. And then there's a dick. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, think about the face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's I not agree. me, because I'm not really like that. I'm very particular. But, you know, some, some girls are. When you're drunk, like you're not particular. I don't know, actually. Maybe I could. Nah, do you, you know not remember you, where I was when we were drunk? I single. don't remember me. I don't remember the drunk single I'm, man. Do. I know that when I'm drunk and I'm single, I'm not that fussy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to think. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. If I'm drunk and we're in the same bed and it's just like, why not? Do you know sure? At that point, you feel like, why not? Let's see. <laughs> we might fall in love. Sex might be so good. We've not helped this person at all. Yeah, all right. <laughs> anyway, let's, 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 move, let's move on to the next dilemma. Okay. I live with two of my friends and they expect me to cook and clean after them. Ooh. Sounds like my life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think you've got to be very careful with your friends who you live with and even who you go on holiday with because holidays and living with friends can break friendships up. Literally, like we went on holiday with our best mate. She ain't no best friend anymore. Exactly. How mm. sad. Those days are over. And then she's friends with my ex. <laughs> 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 Why? Well, I heard. What is it? You are, your ex must be a great friend if everyone wants to be friends with him. He was. He was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, look, I think... You need to say to them, ain't no Gordon Ramsay up in here. Like, am I paying less rent than you guys? Like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> like, unless you guys want to put more rent in because you've got a chef and a cleaner. Mm. Cleaners are expensive. I had one today. Not yeah. that I pay, but still. Mm. Yeah, it's true. And I think another thing you can do is tidy up after yourself. Like, if you have a, like some dinner, wash your plate, but don't do theirs. Leave theirs aside and like, clean up after yourself basically only it might be very hard to do that because for example I try doing that sometimes with my boyfriend and like obviously the place starts getting messy and really it starts, like I start getting it a bit like accumulating yeah and I get really bad like OCD with the place but you, you just need to go through that little bit of a messy stage mm. for them to realise that doesn't have work with me yeah 
Really, no. no. It, it will just me. accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. You know, Gingerbread, it's like he walks into a room and it's like a bomb has gone off. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole room no. just explodes. If I, let, if I let my place get a little bit messy, then he'll be like, okay, shit. You know, so maybe she needs to do that. Yeah, or when you're cooking, make horrific tasting food. Like literally make it so spicy that they shit themselves all night. They'll never expect you to cook again. <laughs> that's a really good that's a really good one. Sometimes you have to be diplomatic in this. Cook shit. enough for yourself. And if they say, like, why haven't you cooked for me? Be like, Am I your chef? Like, what do Yeah. They... Just make the really spicy dish and then like they will never eat it again. Be like, I love really spicy, it's my new thing. Yeah. <laughs> there was a point, there was a stage in my relationship, actually, I think it still happens, where my boyfriend would like get the deodorant out of the cupboard, spray himself, and then drop the deodorant like this on the floor. What? what? Like, it probably took more effort, like, to just chuck the deodorant and then put it back in the shelf. So it was really weird. Like, right in the middle of the bedroom, there's just a deodorant on the floor. Like, how does the deodorant even get there? No. So, and I used to always pick it up and put it back in. Maybe he thinks you're a dog and he's playing fetch. And I got to... <laughs> literally, like, am I a dog? Literally, fetch. That's how it felt. And then at one point, I just thought, you know what? I'm leaving that deodorant right in the middle of the floor and I'm going to step over it and I'm leaving it there. It drove me crazy. But, you know... Then you pick it up in the end. You picked it up in the end. I mean, I don't think like Gingerbeard would ever... Gingerbeard will have a steak and like he'll take the mustard out of the fridge, put the teaspoon in the mustard pot, all of this happening on the dining table, which was like another room, yeah? He will leave... Everything the, there. Everything on the dining table, the mustard open with the teaspoon in it, with the steak no. bits left. Everything will stay there. It will stay there. Wow. It will stay there forever. That's a madness. So how is it, would he survive without you? He'd have a cleaner every day. It'd probably be cheaper he, than so, having me. So you'd have to have a cleaner every day. Yeah, I, I calculated the cost. How much? It'd be cheaper than having me as a girlfriend. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he never listens to this because and knows this. He said it to me. Really? He was like, if I, if you left me, because I'm always like, what would you do about me? Yeah. He's like, I would have a cleaner every day. I was like, that, you're, that's so expensive. He's like, it'll be cheaper. And then I calculated it. <laughs> and then it would be. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, let's move on. This is the last one. Okay. My friends are always so negative or judgy. Everything is cringe or weird. It's really draining me. Sounds like our group. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's like our group <sighs> Our group chat called um, Hose in the City. That's what our group chat is called. Um, there's no hoes. Yeah. And that, I don't understand. I'm the only ho. It bothers Mandy that like none of our friends are hoes. I don't mean, I don't want hoes. Because I was saying earlier, I don't want hoa friends. But like, I like some adventurous stories, you know, come back like you've gone on a few dates, you've swiped a few like well, people. on Saturday, our friend had a lot of stories. She had some tea, yeah? yeah. She had enough tea for a tea party. Literally. She literally made my... I said to her, you made my night. <laughs> like, I'm in a relationship. It's sleep, eat, repeat. I need to hear some stories. I need some tea. I need to hear... We're I living went... vicariously through her right now because when we were single, there was a lot of shit going on. If only yeah. we were doing this podcast while we were single. <laughs> So it much, so much craziness in her. So much. Like, we have a, a lot of craziness going on in our relationships, though. Luckily, they're toxic. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But like, single people got a variety. Yeah. You know? Yeah, different people, their dating, stories, blah, blah, blah. Right? I like it. Like, people, girls that will come back, were like, I went on a date with this guy and that guy, or I went away with this guy, and this is what happened, and just like madness. Anyway, like. So, anyway, our um, group chat, nuns in the city, more yeah. like. Um, nuns, literally. Our group chat is so negative. It's so funny because we're all a group of like very negative girls, I think. Like we'd be wake up and the weather's so shit. The weather's so depressing. Can't stand this country right now with the weather. Oh, and like life is so boring right now. Yeah. And, like we're just a moaning. Moan. It's a venting machine. Yeah. So what I would say for this person is like, maybe your group doesn't suit you. Your friends don't suit you. Mm. If they're draining you, then you need to realize that and find people that suit you because some people are very like positive nancy's all the time which, and they need to be around positive that. nancy's <laughs> is, that a thing? is that a thing or did i make no, it up no i think you made it up but it goes, okay. it positive, goes. Dan positive nancy's need to be around other positive nancy's there are people like that yeah yeah they're called they, karen's no they're not oh no they're not karen's no they're not talking about they're nancy we're more like karen's yeah no no all right forget the forget, karen forget. <laughs> look Basically, there are people that like, they cannot be around any negativity, not one bit. They're like, oh, draining. Yeah. yeah? I need net positivity in my life. You're not bringing positive energy to my life. I don't want it. Yeah. I just like knowing there's other miserable people like me. Do you know what I mean? I'm not the only miserable person. Yeah. Like, me too. You know, that's why I like our little group. Our group. 
works for us. Yeah. It makes us happy in a way because we just work well together. We do, apart from the fact that, like, they're nuns. <laughs> yeah. I might just start sending their virginity online. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, but apart from, like... Yeah. Actually, not really, you know. I'm, I'm kind of chatting shit. It's getting, getting better. Two of them are ringing some real drama in. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. real shit Don't going underestimate on. Yeah. our friends. <laughs> right, anyway. Um, so, what can I say? Look, I don't take person, over with this. For this person, I think if you're, if their energy is draining you, your friends shouldn't be draining you. Maybe mention it first. Be like, look, guys, let's try and pick up the positivity here. I need positive energy in my life. Like, I'm not like this. I don't like it. This isn't, it's not me. You need to be in a group chat where they're like, the sun is shining. It's an amazing day. Yes. Or like, it's raining. Where they're like, the plants are being fed. Mm. The grass is getting greener. Yeah, that's the kind of group trap you need to be in. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, you need new friends. <laughs> you need new friends. No new friends. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, or don't be quick to cut people off. Mm. Speak to your friends. Yeah. So you're quite negative. I want to leave this episode actually on that. That most situations and problems and dilemmas, most of them can be fixed by just like speaking it out. Good communication. Good communication skills. Just like in a relationship, you need to have that in your friendship as well. We're so quick, yeah? Quick. So like cut off friendships when they're like a little bit not suiting us. But with relationships, we'll go through hell to make yeah, them work. Literally. No, say to your friends, guys, let's pick it up a bit more. Let's get make it a bit more positive. Like it's bringing me down. Oh, I need more effort from you. Yeah. Or, like, all these dilemmas we've had. The only ones I'd say that it's no go is like the ones where they flirt with your man and yeah. shit like that. No. But the rest of them, you can literally just talk it out, air it out. Yeah. With your friends. Don't be quick to cut them off. Like like Mandy said, it's true. We're so quick to cut friends off. But with with relationships, we go through all sorts. Yeah, I think if someone said to me in my group, like, let's make it more positive, like it's really bringing me down, I would actually be like, you know what? Maybe she's right. Maybe. To be honest, maybe they are. Maybe we should. Yeah. So I think you should say that to your friends and, you know, bring the positive vibes. Yeah. People might just absorb it off you. I agree. Don't give up on friendship, guys. We yeah, didn't. We cut off our, our, our friend and we mutually cut each other off for three years. One of our closest friends ever. And those three years were horrible. Yeah. And we're back to being like the bestest friends. And I just think what a waste of three years over something so pathetic and petty like we lost those three years together. Yeah, I regret it still to this day. 100%. But I'm so, so glad that we're like back to how we were but we wasted three years together. Yeah, I know. So yeah, don't let petty shit get in the way. Don't cut your friends over, off, off over dumb stuff. Friends are food for the soul, guys. You know what they say? You need like at least three to five friends to be like mentally like healthy and happy. It's really good for like social connections. Feed your soul. Yeah. So we're going to end it on that. I hope you enjoyed the episode and we love you. And we're your, we're your number one besties. We're your best friends. We love you. We love you. Bye.